now that we have a good solid cal calibration we know that this setup works we want to save it and here you can see our tooth is pre-centered in the frame and I'll be moving through the proper setup and exposure settings for the image you can see where the cursor is there's a small square this is the essentially the target inside the projected um, calibration that square especially when working with small objects is essential it's essential to position that square center on your object now that white balance is set I will move on to the grab texture mode both of these settings allow your projector to your scanner to clearly see and interpret the object it's no different than setting the exposure on your digital camera now let's move over to scanning here you can see I'm showing you the brightness control and how it can affect the um, exposure lines which are the red lines and when you're setting the number of scan the number of scans you may think that a higher number will yield better results all a higher number will do is pr produce a lot of redundant information the redundant information will result in a larger file size and make cleaning more difficult I found with ex through experience with working with these smaller objects that ultimately I only need about six images to create a model but I typically need about 12 scans to give the computer enough information to align those individual scans together in the initial processing phase so I typically set my number of scans at 12 for a 360 degree rotation with the turntable and at this point we are ready to start it'll take some time to move through all 12 of these scans and I'll allow the video to show the first few and now you see the computer working on lining up the scans to each other and you see it beginning to build the tooth model now here I'm selecting all the scans and deselecting simply toggle that switch or any of the individual switches and now I'm combining all of those scans into one block this gives us one set of data that can be worked with as one unit now as we prepare to scan the um, top and bottom of the tooth we don't need to do a 360 degree rotation 90 degrees will suffice as we're only looking at a small portion of the tooth we've already seen the, all the sides as we rotated through so I'll be taking a total of six scans which gives us 18 degrees of rotation in between each scan and um, again we won't necessarily be using all of those scans but we're here we're set up we're gathering data right now to build a model later that's very important as you see now I'm working on repositioning the tooth on the clay and once my hands are out of the way here I'll explain to you what I'm doing right here you need to make sure that the front of your object is right at the y-axis point on the table if you have the object too close to where the y-axis is set behind the area you're looking you're going to create a significant amount of foreshortening the tooth is going to sweep very far from left to right as I just displayed there and it's going to give you very bizarre results whereas there as I'm showing you now positioned closer to the axis of rotation the to tooth itself stays relatively stationary this allows the computer to clearly interpret what it's looking at and now I'm just pushing the clay out of the way so it's supporting the tooth but not obscuring the computer's ability to see the image and now we'll make some fine adjustments raising the object so we're back on target and then sliding the object forwards or backwards to bring the target in the center of the frame and after careful testing 
here I'm manually rotating the turntable to see that the target is remaining center on the object of concern and that I'm not producing any bizarre angles um, or unnecessary movement of the object. And here we see the computer is doing a wonderful job of just automatically aligning the scans. The overall time it takes to do just your basic set of scans <clears throat> works out to be about a half an hour after you're comfortable with the equipment in the setup. Now that we've completed scanning the um, top portion of the tooth, we'll take and combine all of the new scans into their own group. So I do this by highlighting all the groups, unselecting the one group I already have, right-clicking on the red field and selecting Combine Scans. So we have all of this base at the bottom that's making it difficult to see anything. So we need to clean. Click on the Polygon tool, and then I'm going to left-click on the field. My mouse is really... Turn this off and on. I don't know why my mouse is giving me so much trouble right now, but it would pick this time to do it. Okay. And all I'm doing is right-clicking around the area that I want to clean. And I'm just doing a bulk cleaning. Nothing really refined right now. And I'm just clicking on spots. And all of this is done with the left click. And when I'm ready to stop, I click right click. That highlights everything red. And delete the triangles. So what we're looking for is an image that has a nice porosity to it and very little streakiness. And all of this is actually looking pretty good. First, allow me to show you the completed cleaning of the initial rotation of the tooth. So you can see everything is nice and sharp. Everything is smooth, well-defined. Nothing is flaring out oddly. A few little flares here, but um, there's a smoothing portion during the fusion that um, eliminates a lot of these errors. So one need not waste all of their time going for an exact polish on all of these images. Now we still have some bizarre images up here and we're going to leave those so the computer has something to key to as we put the cap on the tooth. Here we are. Here's the top of our tooth and we're going to clean this up and this can be done fairly quickly because we don't need a lot of the sides of the teeth. Those are all redundant information. So we're going to go through and do just a very quick um, amputation on a significant portion of this tooth. Okay, this is going to very quickly get rid of a lot of information that we simply don't need. And that was an accidental mouse click, and you can see it did something very bad to my model. Keep an eye out for red. If this happens, just simply click on the cleaning button, and it will eliminate that. So let's try this again. Now the next thing we want to do is start putting our pieces together. This is where we get to have some fun. We have the outside of our tooth, 
you can see a lot of information missing on the top. And we have the crown of our tooth stuffed somewhere in the middle. So first, let's line these up so we can see them. Now we can see each individual component. And we want to select an area that's common to both teeth so that they can be properly aligned. Now you can also not even worry too much. I always start off just allowing the computer to line things up. I very often get good results. So my first step is to leave texture turned on and nothing else selected. Align scans, and I select, I just want to align this scan to this scan. Let it do its thing. As you can see, beautiful results right there. No muss, no fuss. Now, we want to clean up these two sections. We have a lot of extra information coming through from the purple. And we don't need all that information. So, Pay attention to the line you see where the pink is. Turn off the view of the purple, turn it back on, you can still see what's going on. Turn off the pink, and you can see I could cut off the top of the tooth right there, and that's exactly what I'm going to do, just to bulk get rid of unnecessary information. going to lop that right off. And there we have our model of our tooth. Now the last thing we want to do is export this, well is to um, fuse this as one model. I'm going to save my work and the level of sharpness, the lower the number you go, and negative three is the lowest, creates a smooth appearance. Um, it smooths off all the edges. This is you need to, it's a value judgment. Not everything needs to be perfectly smooth. Some bone artifacts I've worked with um, have, a, have a lot of deep cut marks and scratches in them that by smoothing the image, it actually eliminates those. So this setting you play with. Um, the resolution effectively determines the size of your file. It also determines the clarity of the picture that it sends through. So if you're dealing with an object that is photographically intensive, has a lot of subtle features on it, you will need to save to higher and higher resolutions to preserve all that photographic quality. But you can save multiple images. Every You can click Fuse and Export several times. So we'll start with the lowest settings. Okay, and now we have our Fuse model of our tooth. You can see here, these are some of the what I call the little floaties. Um, that's a part of this scan that was in there and it didn't quite become incorporated into the hole. Now let's see how it looks as a photograph. And that's our model.